Welcome to Love Your Family again and again and again and again, the podcast where we focus on parenting with love and clarity. I'm Dr. Marcy, a family culture expert who for over 20 years has been helping parents to create happy and strong families. Today, I am joined by a very special mom. Her name is Mariah, and I am so excited for where you are with your family today and for us to be able to chat to make it even better. So you are a delightful family of four, and I would love for you to share what your family looks like and a bit of what you've been through over the past three years. Hi. Um, so glad to be here, Dr. Marcy. So my family is me, my husband of 10 years, and our delightful, <laughs> challenging son, Joe, who is nine and a half, and his younger sister, Clara, who is a very new seven. Um, we have been on a pretty long journey to get um, several diagnoses for Joe in um, February 2020. Um, one morning I was trying to wake him up for school and he said he was in so much pain that he didn't want to live anymore. So we went to our pediatrician, we went to his gu guidance counselor, um, and we started on this epic journey that has kind of changed all of our lives and changed our family dynamic uh, in pretty big ways. And three years later, what we have found out through a lot of trial and error and trying again and again um, is that Joe has both autism and ADHD. And he is on, he's been on several medications over the past three years uh, to try and get some relief from some of his symptoms. We now have him whittled down to one medication that is working fabulously and he's having a much better year at school he's having a much better year at home um, we are seeing things from him that we have not seen since he was probably four or five um, and by that i mean he is now seeking affection in ways that he didn't before he will come up and ask like can i have a hug um, and he went through several years of saying i don't want hugs please don't touch me if we're going to our grandparents' house, please tell them not to hug me. I don't want to be hugged. I don't want to be touched. I don't like it. And now, you know, he's starting to uh, come come back around and, and realize that affection is nice. Um, and that's I really- I do love how he advocated for himself. Yeah. <laughs> how he was able to express. And I'm sure there were moments where there was behavior that came with those sentiment, with that sentiment. But the fact that he could say, it doesn't feel good to me, yeah. is a really amazing piece of your story. Yeah. So Keep he's going. always been, he's always been very, very um, self-aware. Um, every doctor and specialist that we've had him to um, comments about how self-aware and verbal he is, which is great. And yes, it has been extremely helpful. Um, but today, the reason I'm coming to you, Dr. Marcy, is while we have been on this very long journey, very exhaustive journey with Joe, um, his younger sister, Clara, again, she's a new seven, um, has been on this journey with us. She's been watching it um, since she was, you know, four. And she has unfortunately watched him during episodes of rage and uh, verbal uh, and physical explosions. Um, she's unfortunately, um, you know, had to experience a lot of the pain that he was going through um, and was really, you know, bringing to the family. And she also has watched him get help, which is absolutely wonderful because my children are both very, very young, but they know that they can always go to a trusted adult. They know who their guidance counselor is. They are happy to go and talk to their guidance counselor. They know who, you know, their special education, um, you know, specially trained teachers are and, and who to go to for help 
and what questions to ask. They're happy to go to their assistant principal or principal if they need help. Like they know they're trusted adults and they know when to, they know when they need that help. Um, and my daughter will say sometimes, you know, Hey, I, I think maybe tomorrow I'm going to go talk to the guidance counselor because this boy has been bugging me and I just kind of don't know what to do. And I think I just need to talk about it. So they have really become their own advocates for behavioral health and mental health. Um, and they're very, both very self-aware of where they stand. What we are now experiencing, being on the other side of this big, long journey with Joe, is we're now experiencing sort of the, I don't know if you would call it sibling rivalry um, with Clara or exactly how you would define it, but I'm guessing a lot of families see it, um, where Clara is now like, well, why don't I have a therapist? Well, why, you know, why is it, you know, show the same emotional reactions to me when I get upset. You know, I want to make you have this emotional reaction or I want to, you know, do something that will get me the therapy appointments, the psychiatrist appointments, um, you know, the, the neuropsychological evaluation that, that her brother went through. Um, so we're finding that even though she self-regulates very, very well, um, and that we are able to kind of, when she needs it, give her this pause and, and help her regulate as needed. She will, you know, we'll ask her questions like, why, why are you saying this hurtful thing? Or do you understand what you're saying? You know, when you say, I, I don't, I don't want to live anymore, or I wish I didn't live here anymore. And her responses are generally, they're always, <laughs> um, more along the lines of, well, you know, when Joe did this, you got him a counselor or you, you know, took him to the hospital or you got, you know, you had some emotional reaction to it. And, you know, I just want that sort of attention. And we have to stop and say, <laughs> well, there might have been things that you didn't see um, when Joe was, was saying these things and doing these things. You know, you weren't always present when we pulled him aside and had this part of the conversation about why Joe was saying this and how Joe was really feeling. Um, also, you're, you're different children. You have different personalities. You have different things that make you happy, different things that make you sad. You like different foods, like you're very different people. And you have, you know, we need to, as a mom and dad, we need to make sure that both of you are getting what you need. And Joe's needs are on, you know, they're, they're over here and your needs are over there. And right now, Dr. Marcy, my husband and I are really just like, how do we meet both of their needs? What are we doing here? <laughs> um, yeah, it's more than just how do we get Clara to stop? And more like, what, what does she actually need? Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and how, how are we going to get through this next stage of um, fulfilling both of their needs, making them both feel heard, seen, recognized, and helped? Um, yes. And really get our family through more of the healing process. Because this did mm -hmm. really take a big toll on our family. <clears throat> to go through three years of testing and evaluations and different medications for what we now know are autism and ADHD. First, I want to congratulate you on being on this part of the conversation to be able to focus on the other child, so to speak, right? Yeah. The, the one who is relatively okay that is not a little bit spicy and creating this big uncertainty that, that you went through in your family and to have gone through the journey you've gone through and to be in this moment where Joe is showing everyone who he really is because the support has been put in place, the medication has been put in place. And so he can be the amazing kid that was always stuck inside underneath all of those really challenging moments, he was an amazing person. Mm -hmm. And now he gets to be that kid. 
Yeah. And that took a toll on your whole family. But first, I want to celebrate the fact that you're in that moment where you have found the right combination of peoples and supports and tools and experiences to help him be who he is. Part of which is, yay, like, let's have that huge moment because it's huge. It is. The challenging piece is that Clara was part of that and she doesn't understand how big that is. You and your husband can sit back and think and process and go, wow, there were really scary moments. And, and now we're here. Look what we've done. Look what our family has accomplished together. And I hope that you and your husband are both getting your own support for the hard moments that you went through because it's terrifying. Some of the conversations you had to have with your son, some of the uncertainty that you went through as a parent and you need that help. And what I'm hearing is that your daughter needs her own version of that help. Mm -hmm. Often with siblings, the, the one who is not in crisis holds it together. They know that there's not space in the family because Joe was taking up more than his allotment. He was taking up everybody's allotment. And I want to be really clear that that was not intentional or on purpose. It's not like he was sitting there consciously going, ha ha, how can I do this? His system was so dysregulated that he took up all the space. We have often so used the analogy siblings, that, um, you know, Joe was sucking all the oxygen out of the room. He would come into a room and just suck all the oxygen out. So you're right. But yes, um, yeah. not because yeah. he was trying, but because he needed that much, much oxygen. <laughs> Yeah. And the rest of you accommodated it, including Clara. Sure. She, at her little four-year-old self, without even knowing it, took smaller breaths because there was less oxygen for her. And now that Joe's oxygen intake, so to speak, is more regulated, there's more oxygen for everybody else. And Clara is going, wow, a full breath. This feels great. But now that she can take the full breath, now that she occupies more oxygen, she's like, well, when I have more space, what do I do with it? And the only model she really has is what Joe did with that. So she's going, well, I have more space. How do I fill this space? Let me try on what I saw before. So she's trying that on. And everything I'm hearing from you is that it's not her authentic feeling. She is not struggling with the mental health questions that Joe was. She is not in the type of pain that her words are reflecting. She's reflecting Joe's words. And he was in that pain. I just want to make sure that that is correct. Yes. Okay, cool. So based on everything we know, that's where she is. And so, and I want to make sure I normalize this. This happens in so many families. But it's not talked about nearly enough. So thank you for coming here so we can talk about this and other parents can hear that this, this is part of your journey. It doesn't end when the kid that was in crisis stabilizes. I mean, yes, because you have to make sure he continues to stay stabilized and will shift as he grows. But there is also now the normalizing and the support that you now need to put in place for Clara, for the other child. I also want to highlight that as a parent, you have just been through so much that you don't have a lot left in this moment. Like you need a vacation, sure. but now instead of breathing for a moment, you have to go straight into gear for, for your other child. And that is hard work and you can do that. And we're going to talk about exactly how, but that's part of what's happening. So we need to, to talk through and problem solve for your family, for Clara, how to get her what she needs, which is to understand how to take up more space in a beautiful way rather than a destructive way mm -hmm. that is right for her. Because that's really what she's, she's like, I have this space. I don't know what to do with it. We're going to talk through exactly how to do that. Does that all make sense to you? It does. Thank you. This okay. Great. <laughs> awesome. Sometimes the framework, like we need the framework first to be like, okay, now what do we do? So my very first question is, what does Clara love to do? What are her happy things? What do you guys do together that she loves? Because this is going to be part of the solution. Um, 
so Clara is a very um, time and attention uh, sort of person. Like these are her love languages. She wants you to spend time with her. Um, you know, any sort of little activity, painting her nails, um, having a little tea party. Uh, she's very much a girly girl. Um, you know, she she wants to play school. She wants to play house. Um, but it's very much a spend time with me. We can sit and watch a movie. We can cuddle. We can have a little dance party and sing. Um, but it's very much a we're going to spend time together. That's really what she's looking for more than a certain activity. Yes, there are activities she loves, but it's really I, I want someone on one time. I want some contact um, via hugs or cuddling or snuggles. You know, um, and. Yeah. And um, she likes words of affirmation, um, but th- it's really the time, attention, not the material sort of things. Um, so it's it's really okay. great in that regard. <laughs> All right. I am super excited right now because that makes so much sense to me. She wants your time. She wants you to tell her she's amazing and what sh- what her little four, five, six, and now seven-year-old brain is saying is, well, Joe got pulled out of school to have one-on-one time with mom and go talk to that other special person, aka he got a neuropsych eval. Dad took Joe out of school and takes him every week to go see that special person who talks to him all about his feelings, aka therapy, but she sees Joe gets special time. She sees when before you put in all of the amazing support that you currently have in place and figured out the right the right puzzle pieces that go together for him, she saw that there were moments when he took all the oxygen out of the room and everyone's 100% focus went on him. Mm-hmm. She wants 100% of your focus on her and she doesn't know how to get it. Because even it, because if all is well in your house and she's like, come play tea with me, you're like, sure, I'll come play tea. Oh, wait, my phone is ringing. Let me go answer it. Oh, wait, I hear your brother calling. Let me, oh, wait, I need to boil pasta for dinner. And it's not 100% focused attention the way you do when your child is screaming bloody murder and throwing things around the house. Sure. So what it tells me is how do we get her that type of special moments together, planned, scheduled, intentional time, and how do we get our 100% of your attention? And then there's one more third thing, but I want to talk about these two first. So the first one, how do you get scheduled time? Maybe given everything that she has gone through, and I don't know if you have done this for her or not, is her, her having a therapist and her having someone to go talk to who can highlight her strength who can talk to her about how hard she worked and validate her experience of hearing all of the things being witness to having to keep herself safe, all of those things she went through in the years that Joe was unregulated. So she might really need her own therapy appointments to have that space. She absolutely she does. Might also something just need... we're looking into. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So yes, that will be part of the solution. The other piece of that that it also makes me think of is, can she have a weekly date with you or your husband, or maybe in my dream world, one of each, where you for an hour say, you know what? You're absolutely right. I hear you saying that Joe went to appointments all the time and you want appointments. So you know what? I'm going to make an appointment with you. You and me, we're going to go, you know, for for a walk down by the wa- by the water, or we're going to go, you know, this week, get ice cream. This week, we're going to go up to your bedroom and do a manicure on each other. But it's, you know, every week, same day, ideally same time. But, you know, if there are exceptions, there are exceptions. Life happens. But if you're going to move it, you tell her. Because she wants that special time with you and she wants it to be one-on-one. Joe got all of this one-on-one time. Can you give her all of this one-on-one time? Sure. In very specific ways. Yeah. So. Is that something that seems practical and doable? Yes, it does. The other big piece that I wonder is my guess is that in the moments that Joe is having a really big hard time, you and your husband may have had a really big reaction. As in, 
he got elevated, you got elevated. So there was yelling happening on all sides because that happens. Very human. Sure. Okay. There is something fascinating about how we respond as adults when they're when we yell. We get big and our body language gets bigger and our voice goes up or down and there's facial expressions that are entertaining. And if you are not in the immediate situation, but on the outside looking in, it looks like cartoon characters engaging together. It is funny. And when I do when I talk about the way we look when we yell and I'm on video, I like do the facial expressions and we get jerky and all the things that you can't see on a podcast, but imagine. And what I wonder is if your daughter is looking for some of that reaction from you. She wants 100% of your attention in that form. Gotcha. Yeah. And so she's pushing your buttons to kind of see because she has started to equate that behavior. A, it's, it's entertaining. It just is. And, you know, we have yes. to give that its space. But two, she has started to equate that with caring and 100% attention. When we're yelling at our kids, when we're in those crisis moments and we're all loud, we don't care about our cell phone. Dinner will burn. Like, it doesn't matter. So she has confounded all of those things. So, A, we need to take them apart. But B, we need to yell at her. And when I say we need to yell at her, I'm not talking about in that negative way because something's wrong. But I recommend to parents doing something called positive yelling. So when she does something awesome, when she does something good, and it can be small to begin with, she can finish a homework worksheet. And you're like, oh my gosh, Clara, you did amazing. You're a rock star. I can't believe how you did that all by yourself. And that you know the two plus two is four. You're amazing. Right? Like positively yell at her. See, you're laughing because <laughs> it's funny. Because we're funny when we yell when we're not actually angry. And so she's looking for that bigness from you, that fluctuation of emotion. She's looking for a rise. Teacher, I will yell at you when you are super amazing. Give her that. Because kids express their emotions in really big ways all the time, like, right? Kids get excited. They jump up and down and they yell. Kids get mad. They jump up and down and yell. Yeah. Clara probably has that range. She wants you to jump up and down and yell. Yeah. So do it for the positive. Sure. Do it for the good. And create moments with her where nothing else matters, where Joe is not allowed to interrupt, where your cell phone stays down. And unlike with Joe in the moments of crisis that you were having, maybe your phone gets put down somewhere with a timer for 30 minutes or a timer for 15 minutes. And you don't touch it until the timer goes off, but the timer goes off and you can end the time with Clara and move forward. But if she, if you create pockets that are you know, those date night moments. So they're predictable. She knows she's going to get it every week. Mm -hmm. If you create moments and maybe they're the same moments, maybe they're different ones where she gets a hundred percent of your attention. And if you create moments where you're positively yelling at her, she's going to get some of these pieces that she thinks she needs to do these negative behaviors for. Okay. Makes sense. And Okay. Awesome. Because the goal is for her to understand she can have anything she wants now. There's more space for her. She gets to use all the oxygen she wants. And you're all going to have all of the oxygen you want and there will be air left in the room. But she needs to do it in a positive way. That makes a ton of sense. The one other thought that keeps going through my head is in the beginning when you were talking about how you talked to her, how her and Joe like different foods and have different ways of being in the world, which I love that you do that because explaining to her that you're different people hopefully will help her understand that there are different needs. The one thing I might add is that the way they feel in the world is different. Right. I think oftentimes when we talk to kids about being different people, we look for the external things because it's easy to see. I have sure. curly hair. You have straight hair. You're tall. I'm short. Right. We go to the external, which she probably gets by now because you've had that conversation with her enough. Mm -hmm. But I might talk about what 
what it feels like inside her brain, inside her heart. And like, as a person, she feel, really loves feeling this way while Joe really likes feeling that way, which means he thinks different thoughts. He feels things differently. So that she starts to understand that when he said some of these really scary sentences to you, he was saying it because he was feeling it that way, not because he was trying to get a particular reaction. She's saying it to get a particular reaction. And because your kids are so good at advocating for themselves and asking for help, I want to start teaching her, or rather, I want you to start teaching her how to ask for that engagement. Mom, I really need you to pay attention to me right now. Mom, I, re- I really need us to go upstairs and have a one-on-one conversation. Can she ask for the things that she's getting by saying some of these and doing some of these inflammatory things? For Joe, those, those inflammatory things were living in his, in his being and he had no other way to get it out. Yeah. I think Clara could get it out in a different way and ask for her needs to be met. That's a good point. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So what do you think it will look like when you go put some of these pieces in place? What might shift? What might you imagine is going to shift? Um, so I think that probably both children would benefit from positive yelling. That kind of gregarious, like, we're having grapes for dinner! <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> Joe, I know you love strawberries! You know, just kind of like yes! the, the the childlike, you know, we're going to get super excited about, you know, a blue shirt, um, you know, and, and really carrying that forward. I think, you know, it will help them see uh, my husband and I in different lights because, you know, they, they also have seen us as, you know, these kind of negative, always trying to rein them in, always trying to get calm um, but maybe we kind of embrace the chaos now and then and, um, but, but keep it on a positive note. Um, yes. So kind of reteaching ourselves to, to do that kind of fun, positive yelling that shows them that, you know, we can, as mom and dad, we can get positively excited just like they can get positively excited. And we're not always going to be the, you know, please, please stop, you know, yelling, please stop, don't talk to me like that. That's not appropriate. Um, you know, we're not always going to be the um, kind of negative commanders. Um, so I And think- for a long time, you had to be the negative commanders. And now Absolutely. your family is in a place where you get to be playful again. Yeah. You get to bring back that joy for them, but, and also for you. Yes. How fun would that be to like have a dance party in your kitchen with your kids? It's <gasps> awesome. <Yes. laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think that's what Clara's asking for. I think so too. That makes a Time lot of sense. Time to have some more joy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to write that sentence down. I love that. Yes. Time for more joy. You guys have done a lot of hard work and been through a lot of hard moments. And it has taken the joy further away from your family than probably any of you ever wanted. And so now bring it back. Okay. Yeah. And more hopefully joy, that more will... fun. More happy dances. <laughs> yes. Hopefully that will keep us on a path toward, um, you know, really re- starting to repair our family. It's been important. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is awesome. So usually at the end, I ask parents, what's the one thing they're going to make sure they do? Um, And I'm hoping that your answer is have more dance parties in the kitchen and do positive yelling. Um, But I also want to create the possibility that you might pick one other thing that is that that you think will will also embody and encapsulate that. So you don't have to take my answer by any means. but what's what's the one thing you're going to make sure, you know, starting today, you're going to do differently with your family? So I think that starting today, we will definitely engage in some positive yelling and dance parties in the kitchen. Um, we are already do 
dance parties every now and then, but we'll make them more of a regular thing. Um, I think that mornings are a really good time for that um, because they're starting to get a little antsy for school and that's kind of a natural way to harness that energy, but also keep them getting done what needs to be gotten done so they can get in the car. <laughs> um, and that's also a good time to be like, did you brush your teeth? You know, and just kind of make it a silly positive yelling instead of a, you know, you know, please go brush your teeth. We have to keep the train on track. Let's go. <laughs> yes. Um, it feels so different. And I'm really excited for you to go try this because what I have seen over and over again as I work in homes is that when we get playful, kids respond so much better. They're like, oh, no, wait, uh, let me go do that and ask me again in a minute. Like, they're so much more willing to do it rather yeah. than when we're like, did you do the thing? They're like, no, I didn't. And they walk away from me. Yeah. Yes, I love I love some good teeth brushing, positive yelling, for sure. <laughs> um, I think it will also be uh, a little more of a challenge, but – um, we can start creating more of those one-on-one, uh, -on -one, you know, date night sort of situations. So both kids are, you know, in extracurricular activities, um, but that can have positives and, and negatives. So, you know, often one kid is going with one parent already to go to their extracurricular. Probably not that hard to say, okay, you know, we're going to sit down for 20 minutes afterward. Or we're going to, you know, go to the library for 20 minutes afterward. Or we're going to, you know, just have that little positive thing while the other parent is also doing that with the other child. Okay, I'm going to be the one staying home with you tonight. You know, it's not a counseling night. It's not a therapy event. Like, but let's find something that we want to do. Um, and really kind of yes. shutting off the cell phone and putting things down and creating that one-on-one -on -one time with both of them in a different way. Yes. And I love that you're looking at how this already fits in your life naturally. You know, the fact that you have two grownups and two children makes it real easy. And it's not, you know, dad gets one on one time with Joe. So I don't know what's going to happen. I guess I'm hanging out with Clara, but being like dad gets time with Joe, I get time with Clara and we can make it special, even if this is the natural flow of our life. Right. And so highlighting it and yeah, you're the one home with Clara. You guys would be doing your thing, but creating an intentional pocket and saying, this is our special time together. It changes the quality, right? You already had the time together. And oftentimes parents are like, what does it matter if we name it or not? Because when we name things, they feel really exciting. It's why we have things called staycations, right? <laughs> A staycation <laughs> is you have time off from work and you're just not going anywhere, but we name it and now it feels special. Yes. Right. If you come up with names for these one on one times with your kids, all of a sudden there would be like, Claire's going to be like, we have staycation mom time right now. Oh, my gosh. Tuesday night's the best. Yeah, you have <laughs> school tomorrow, but you have a special little pocket of time and it feels exciting when we name it. So I love that you're going to do that, too. Oh, it's going to get so good in your house. You're not going to know what to do with it. We're going to have to have another conversation about how to how to navigate all the joy and all the <laughs> laughter and all the good times in your family, which, you know, happy to do that. I look forward to that. <laughs> yes. Thank you for coming, for sharing so openly about your family, about a, a situation that you have found yourself in that can feel really vulnerable to talk about and really sensitive and really important. Um, and I'm super grateful that you have come and shared because so many families are going through a similar moment or will or have, and the normalizing it and the opening up about it and the tools around it, um, I'm hoping will really help your family, but also help others. So I really am a deeply appreciative for you coming and sharing and for all the work that you have put forth for your family already, um, because you guys have come so far. And it's a joy to hear about. Thank you. I appreciate your time and your help. Absolutely. Have a wonderful day. And I'm looking forward to an update. All right. Thank you. And thank you for listening. I know your time is precious and limited. I'm grateful that you shared it with us today. What's your one takeaway? 
just one small step can make a big difference. Make sure you know when new episodes come out by subscribing here and joining my mailing list at drmarcy.com backslash podcast. Do you want to be a guest on a future episode of Love Your Family again and again and again and again? Then go to drmarcy.com backslash podcast guest and let me know. Finally, do you need individualized help for your family? Then go to drmarcy.com backslash contact and connect with my team to learn how we can help you. Remember, blue skies are ahead and we're going to get there together.